Today's sponsor is Project Pals, an amazing collaborative workspace for students to create and work with projects. Stay tuned at the end of the show to learn more about getting started for free and how I'm using Project Pals in my classroom. Gold Standard Project-Based Learning, Episode 384. The 10-Minute Teacher Podcast with Vicki Davis. Every weekday, you'll learn powerful, practical ways to be a more remarkable teacher today. Today, we're talking with project-based learning expert, Susie Boss, who has a new book she co-authored with John Larmer called Project-Based Teaching. Now, Susie, you've been reporting on project-based learning for quite some time. How would you define project-based teaching? First, thanks for bringing me into the conversation, uh, Vicki. It's probably been a decade or so that I've been writing about project-based learning and working with teachers really all around the globe, helping them get better at this very important way of teaching and learning. I think what we've done with this book is take a close look at what is the teacher's role. Most of us understand, most teachers understand that project-based learning is about giving students more room to drive their own learning, to ask questions, to make decisions, to have some voice, uh, to create products uh, that help to answer, you know, important, meaningful questions. That's all about student agency. So teachers often wonder, well, what am I doing? If, you know, if my students are driving more of their learning, what's my role? And we know that the teacher's role is essential um, in project-based learning success. And so we decided to take a really close look and get kind of granular about how teachers go about seven particular practices that add up to a really rich learning experience for their students. Now, were any of these practices a surprise to you? They're not a surprise, but I think what did surprise me in interviewing lots and lots of teachers for for the research uh, for the book, I interviewed many teachers who have lots of experience, different levels of experience, running projects with their students, designing projects, facilitating this kind of learning. And so there are things like creating a, a good culture in your classroom. That's not new. We all know that relationships with our students are really key. You know, managing the learning, scaffolding student learning, you know, meeting the needs of all your learners. This is what good teachers do all the time. I think what surprised me were some of the specific teacher moves that really good teachers sometimes don't even realize that they're making um, that lead to student success. And I'll, maybe I could tell you a quick story. Um, I was talking with a, a teacher about how do you go about engaging and coaching students through PBL? You know, that's one of our key project-based teaching strategies. So we all know that, you know, you want learning to be engaging, that students are going to be buying in more if they're engaged in the topic, that you need to coach them through the process and all of that. But this teacher thought about, gosh, how how do I actually engage my coach, you know, engage and coach my students? She thought about it overnight and got back to me with this wonderful um, email going in great detail about she how she helped a young learner. This is an elementary project get unstuck in a project. This was a student who was just feeling like, I can't be successful. I don't know what to do next. And the teacher sits down alongside her, gives her that room to kind of, um, you know, be comfortable with her uncertainty, um, help give her just the nudges that she needed to get her started, that gradual release back to the student once she kind of got on her feet again and got going. Um, So for this teacher, it was a, a chance to really be reflective about, gosh, what did I actually do? You know, here are three, four, five specific things I did in a very short conversation with this student that helped her go from feeling stuck to feeling successful. A lot of those interviews had those kind of ahas by teachers who thought, you know, I really do have a strategy to design and plan a project that I hadn't thought about it before or had this great management strategy that, you know, I've never really kind of articulated, but but here it is. So I felt like we got to some of the secret sauce of what makes project-based learning really work well. You know, I would agree with that. Having worked in the business world as a manager and then also as a teacher, a lot of the conversations I have with students when I'm trying to help them move forward in a project are a lot like I would have had with one of my employees who was struggling on a project. I mean, they're very similar. You know, how do you get along with people? How do you motivate with people? How do you motivate yourself? How do you get a clear vision for the project? I mean, it kind of feels like that same sort of thing. Do you think teachers need 
models to be able to have these types of conversations or, or what helps teachers understand these strategies or is it just intuitive? Well, I think for those who have been kind of our pioneers in PBL, some of the the advanced scouts, you know, people like yourself who've been doing this for a while, you guys have some of the strategies and I think you can be the role models. So what I'm excited about with this book is um, that, you know, we have kind of broken down a lot of these great practical, doable strategies. But at the same time, we've also created a series of videos that take you right into the classrooms of the teachers that you know I'm writing about in the book. And you can see them work alongside their students. You can see what it looks like when they're helping a struggling learner get unstuck or uh, you know, kind of helping a, a student recognize that moment of reflection, recognize um, what it is they've accomplished, You know, those kind of meta moments of learning. So you get to really see what it looks like. And I think that that's really important for teachers who haven't had a chance to be in PBL classrooms, either as learners or as teachers. We need to help them create that vision. Here's what it looks like when it's going well. So Susie, what do you think is the most common mistake teachers uh, make when working with project-based teaching? I think that the biggest fear, I don't know if it's a common mistake, but I think the biggest concern they have is about coverage of content. That's the most <laughs> persistent discussion I have with teachers. They worry that a project will take time away from their content and they'll never get you know, through everything they have to cover. So we have to kind of really dig into that question and think about what is it you want your students to get out of this time with you, this learning time, and help them realize that the project is a way to go deeply into the content. It's not a sidestep around the content or something you do just for fun, um, you know, in between serious study. This is really the meat of learning. And I think when we can get past that misconception about PBL, then we can, you know, make a lot more progress. Um, quickly because then I think teachers start to see the value. And you and your friends at the Buck Institute use this great example of it's not the dessert, it's actually the learning. And I think that if if teachers are just adding this on top of, okay, now I'm going to teach it and then I'm going to do a cute little project to maybe help them remember it or right. be memorable, that, that it's really a shift, isn't it? It is. It is. You know, we talk about, um, you mentioned the Buck Institute. It's not dessert. It's main course. <laughs> and for teachers who are worried about content coverage, you know, I encourage them to think about, okay, what are kind of the big ideas you really want to get to over this semester or, um, you know, the next couple of units of study? Which of those kind of lend themselves to a project that's going to have some connection to students' interests or some tie into real life issues that they care about? Something where they could really perhaps do some good or be of service or solve a real problem. Um, and then you can go deep into the content that's connected to that uh, question or issue. And, you know, the coverage issue kind of then fades away because you really do start to see what students gain academically. Now, Susie, you've seen the pendulum swing. And, and you know, sometimes people think, oh, project-based learning, we're going to do everything project-based learning. Is, is that what you're <laughs> recommending? You know, should project-based learning be sometimes? Is, should it be every subject? You know, how do we pick this out of our tool belt to use in our classrooms? Yeah, I think for most, in most settings, most school settings, it's going to be a strategy that you use frequently, but perhaps not all the time. So you might alternate between a PBL unit and then maybe some more traditional instruction and then back into another PBL unit. That's probably the most common way that we see it um, implemented. There are some schools that do what I call wall-to-wall -wall PBL, where every subject is taught or nearly every subject is taught through interdisciplinary projects. That requires a whole school um, structure that supports that kind of model. And most of us don't live in a world where we have natural um, block time and, you know, 90 minute collaborative times with other teachers and all those sorts of wonderful things that allow for that sort of full on wall to wall PBL. But I think making sure students have at least a couple opportunities per semester, maybe uh, per year as they go through the grades, you can imagine how their skills as uh, in the process of PBL, being really good collaborators, being able to take in critical feedback and get and respond to it, you know, make an, a better product in response to feedback. Um, they get much better at those processes, the more experience they have in, in the doing of PBL. Yeah. And once you go really into PBL and you teach that way, it would be hard for me to teach any other way because it's just such a powerful, exciting thing that kids <laughs> talk about. 
So the book is Project Based Teaching. We'll also have an interview with John Larmer, editor in chief of the Buck Institute Education Journal, I believe is the name of that. So you can try to, to understand how you can create rigorous and engaging learning experiences based upon this research. Thanks, Susie. Today's sponsor is Project Pals. Project Pals has a useful classroom collaborative platform that lets you create and manage projects for your students. Right now, my students are creating and managing a project as they're creating a podcast to record powerful stories from the recent storms in our area. Project Pals connects with Google Classroom, but also lets me see the detail on which students are contributing and participating. I also love the task board, which is a Trello-like Kanban board that lets students create, assign, and complete tasks. You can also link in Google Docs and do brainstorming and so much more. It's really a very powerful tool. I will be featuring this tool on my blog and newsletter this week. So go to projectpals.com. That's P-R-O-J-E-C-T-P-A-L-S.com and sign up today. Thank you for listening to the 10-Minute Teacher Podcast. You can download the show notes and see the archive at coolcatteacher.com forward slash podcast. Never stop learning.